Hi, it's Mike Panja. We're going to do something special today. Dim sum. Chinese appetizers often served in a dim sum restaurant where you have servers roaming around among the diners, each with a platter of wonderful, exquisite dumplings or various other appetizers, which you select merely by pointing to them and the server will put some of them on your plate. Wonderful stuff. So today we're going to make one of the elements of a typical dim sum. This is a pork and Chinese cabbage dumpling. Something really good. You're going to love it. The first thing we're going to have to do is cut up our cabbage. Now, for those of you that may not know what a Napa cabbage or a Chinese cabbage looks like, here it is. This is what you'll be looking for in your produce market. So what we're going to do is cut about a third of it vertically. Then we're going to cut thin slices across then we'll cut in the other direction so we can make very small pieces the cut up cabbage goes into the colander where we're going to get the excess water out of it now to get some of the excess moisture out of the cabbage we're going to add a little salt, stir it up, and now I'm going to put the colander in the sink to let it drain for about 20 minutes. We're ready to put our filling together. Here's the pork that has been minced up. Scallions, cut fine. Finely minced ginger. Soy sauce. Sesame oil. and a pinch of five spice powder. That looks like a pinch, yes? Okay, that'll go in. We'll stir that all up. Now I'm gonna add the cabbage to our stuffing, but first I'm going to squeeze the water out of it, one handful at a time. Now we'll stir it up and our filling is done. The wrappers or the skins are pretty straightforward. We have 250 grams of all-purpose flour, which is about two cups, and 130 grams of water, which is a half a cup, plus a little bit, plus two teaspoons, if you're still refusing to get a kitchen scale and measure the stuff in grams the way you ought to. I'm not saying you should do it. It's just a recommendation. It's a thought. If you don't have a kitchen scale, you're missing out. So in goes our 130 grams of water. I am going to use the stand mixer to knead it. You can knead it by hand. You're certainly welcome to do it that way if you like. I'm gonna do it by machine. I'm gonna run it at low speed for about 10 minutes. After eight to 10 minutes of kneading, we cover the dough and let it rest for 30 to 60 minutes. 
Here's another good use of your kitchen scale. I know we're going to make about 26 dumplings out of the dough that we've made. And rather than try to roll it out and divide it into 26 equal pieces, I do the math and I figure out that each dumpling should contain 15 grams of dough. So using my scale, I can chunk off a piece that's 20, so we want to get 15. Okay, now we roll this up, flatten it out. Now, a little caution, I'm going to use flour so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. But remember, we only want to flour one side because when we stick the edges together later, they won't stick very well if they're floured. So we'll just flour the side that's touching the rolling pin. We want to roll it out thin. Now we'll take a scant spoonful of our stuffing, put it in the middle. The easiest shape to make of these dumplings, just fold it in half, squeeze the edges together at the top. Now, this part that's sticking out, put your finger in the middle, push it up, and then squeeze the top of its edge closed. Do it with both ends. And we have kind of a crisscross shaped dumpling. Now these dumplings are meant to be boiled, so I'm going to slide the number I need for my lunch into the boiling water. Now, there's a technique here that comes from Chinese people. I don't know if you've guessed or if I'm tipping you off to some news, but I am not Chinese. So I have to rely on the thousand years of Chinese culinary expertise and follow what they say, which is boil the water again when it comes to a boil, add a half a cup of cold water, let it come to a boil again, do it again, another half a cup of cold water, bring it to a boil again, and do it again a third time to complete the process. then they're done. Now, I like to serve dumplings to myself with either hot sauce or oyster sauce or both. And that's what I've done here. That's what I've arranged here. Well, there you have it. I hope you've learned that you don't have to be Chinese to make an authentic, delicious dim sum dumpling. If you like what I've been doing here, please subscribe if you haven't done it already. And why not share my videos with some friends, relatives, people you know that you think might be interested in cooking, food, the kinds of things that I do. I'd really appreciate it. Well, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.